The Basics has just reached 200,000 subscribers, and we're celebrating with an episode you've been requesting for a long time. Back in the spotlight after 2022's legacy toy line, it's those Decepticon Roadhogs, the Stunticons. The original Stunticon toys were designed to be part of the Japanese toy line, Diaclone, but Diaclone was cancelled before they could be released. Instead, they first hit shelves when Hasbro imported them to become part of the Transformers toy line in 1986. The Stunticons were a combiner team, five individual robots who could merge into one giant robot. The group consisted of Lamborghini Countach Breakdown, a paranoid scout who was convinced that everyone was watching him, able to generate vibrations with his engine that shut down other machines. Dead End, a depressed, nihilistic Porsche 928 who figured that the war was pointless since all Transformers would die one day. Drag Strip, a selfish, egotistical Terrell P-34 race car who believed winning was everything and would utilize every dirty trick in the book to do it. Wild Rider, a crazy Ferrari 308 who terrorized other motorists with his reckless driving and the team's leader, hated and feared by his men, the cruel, merciless Motormaster, a Kenworth Aerodyne truck who would drive over anything that got in his way, and was convinced that he was a match for Optimus Prime himself. The team combined to form Menasaur, but the Stunticons' hatred of Motormaster meant that their minds didn't fuse as well as their bodies, leaving Menasaur with an unstable, violent personality. Motormaster formed Menasaur's torso, while the other Stunticons became his limbs, each able to transform into either an arm or a leg, all totally interchangeable, able even to be mixed and matched with other combiners designed the same way. Like their rivals, the Autobot Jet Team, the Aerialbots. Now, these two groups represented a change from the toy line's norm. Typically, it was the Autobots who turned into cars and trucks, while the Decepticons became jets. And this inversion of the natural order was highlighted by the Transformers animated series, which introduced the Stunticons late in its second season, ahead of their toys' release. Tired of the Autobots ruling the roads, Megatron decided to create an automotive team of his own, rebuilding stolen human vehicles into Transformers and using the megacomputer Vector Sigma to give them life. The Stunticons went on to star in several showcase episodes, including one in which they wreaked havoc during a transcontinental car race, and another that saw a team of Autobots with similar vehicle forms repaint themselves to impersonate the Stunticons so they could infiltrate the Decepticon camp and sabotage their newest weapon. The Stunticons and the other combiner teams also enjoyed a major marketing push in Japan, where they starred in several pieces of exclusive media, including the direct-to-video special Scramble City, and the sequel series, 1987's The Headmasters and 1990's Transformers Zone. The Stunticons also appeared in Marvel's Transformers comic book, with supplementary stories exclusive to the United Kingdom's version of the series explaining that in this continuity, the Decepticons were inspired to create them by a vision of the future from the Autobot Matrix. After their introduction, though, the Stunticons didn't appear very much, and they were quietly phased out of the comic after their toys were discontinued in 1988. However, the figures were reissued in Europe and Australasia in 1990, so the British comic brought the team back to appear in a new run of stories, which included Wild Rider being mistaken for a traitor and executed by Megatron, and the rest of the team starring as the villains of the final UK original strip, abducting an Autobot-allied human journalist. It was planned to re-release the toys again with new colour schemes as part of 1993's Generation 2 toy line, but this release was cancelled. However, a limited quantity of the recoloured breakdown was made available as an exclusive at the very first officially backed convention, BotCon in 1994. 
Though there have been many Decepticon cars in the decades since their introduction, the Stunticons were the first. And that's meant they've often been revisited by the new Transformers series of the 21st century. For a time, though, the whole team would typically only appear together in media like comic books. When it came to toys, it was much more common for individual members of the group to show up apart from the others. All five Stunticones would receive multiple new figures over the years, but they were spread across various different toy lines and continuities, and most were recolors of other characters, hence they couldn't combine with each other. At times, certain members have also had to go by different names, due to Hasbro temporarily losing the trademarks on the originals, with Motormaster being renamed Motor Breath and Wild Rider becoming Breakneck. Sometimes, the name Stunticon has also been used to refer to other groups of automotive-themed Decepticons, including a team of drones from 2010's Power Core Combiners, which were controlled by, and combined with, the Decepticon Overrun. The full roster of classic Stunticons was reunited in 2011, when a Transformers animated incarnation of the team was released as an exclusive set at that year's BotCon. Now, again, this version of the team couldn't combine, as they were all recolors of existing animated figures, a move that notably resulted in a female incarnation of Dragstrip, recolored from RC. The convention's exclusive comic book explained that they were an undercover Decepticon unit who had copied Autobot body forms in order to disguise themselves as a travelling stunt show, as part of an attempt to break Megatron out of prison. A new set of combining Stunticon toys was finally released in 2015's Combiner Wars, able to merge into Menasaur in the classic interchangeable style. This series added two new members to the team, the confident and charismatic Off-Road, a pickup truck who could become one of Menasaur's limbs, out to prove himself to his new teammates by taking on the dirtiest, most dangerous missions they wanted no part of, and the calculating but short-tempered Blackjack, who formed Menasaur's chest plate. A special box set of the figures was even released in Generation 2 colours. The release of the Combiner Wars toys led to the Stunticones becoming one of the biggest Combiner teams of the 2010s, with a string of prominent appearances in a variety of media, beginning with a tie-in story arc in IDW Publishing's comic books. The Stunticones had been introduced into IDW's comics a few years earlier, when they were given the power to combine by Decepticon conman Swindle. But the technology was imperfect, and the Autobots had been able to defeat Manasaur by exploiting his fractured mind, turning the Stunticons against one another. In Combiner Wars, by which time Wild Rider had left the group to strike out on his own and been replaced by Off-Road, the scheming Starscream set out to use the Stunticons for his own ends. He planted Blackjack on the team, then used the mystical Enigma of Combination to fuse them into Menasaur once again, knowing that Blackjack's volatile temper would influence the giant's mind and cause him to rage out of control, giving Starscream the opportunity to appear a hero by helping to put the Stunticon's threat down. The Combiner Wars toys would also earn the Stunticons appearances in Machinima's tie-in series of webtoons, in which Menasaur rampaged across the planet Caminus until being taken down by Windblade, and in a series of boss battles in the video game Transformers Devastation. Hot on the heels of Combiner Wars, concurrently running series Robots in Disguise introduced its own combination-themed subline, Combiner Force, in 2017, which included its own version of the Stunticons. This incarnation of the team was made up of Motormaster, Dragstrip, and three new members. The brutish Heatseeker, named after his signature missile weapons, the snobbish Slashmark, who could tear up the road with his energized tires, and the nervous Wildbreak, able to project destructive vibratory waves. 
Between his personality and his powers, it was pretty clear Wildbreak was based on Breakdown, but he was evidently given a new name since another version of Breakdown had already appeared in this continuity, in 2010's Transformers Prime. Multiple toys of the team's members were available, and the characters could combine in various different ways. Dragstrip and Wildbreak could merge into Dragbreak, Heatseeker and Slashmark could form Heatmark, and of course they could all merge with Motormaster into Menasaur. The Stunticons served as the main antagonists of the Robots in Disguise cartoon's third season, setting out to literally conquer Earth's roads until Bumblebee's team were able to defeat them, exploiting Menasaur's mental instability to overpower him. The original Stunticons returned in 2022's Transformers Legacy, with a new set of toys that abandoned the classic interchangeable combination style in favour of creating a Menasaur based on his character design from the original cartoon. The team's unconventional new combining process involved Motormaster's trailer splitting into limb and torso pieces for Menasaur to which the Stunticons attached. In addition to all their appearances as a team, the last decade has also seen some of the individual Stunticons find significant fame apart from the group. As mentioned, Breakdown was featured in Transformers Prime, and recently made another prominent solo appearance in Transformers Earthspark in 2023, while Dead End had a supporting role in Transformers Cyberverse in 2020. Stories I'll look at in dedicated videos of their own in the future. But whether they're together or alone, the Stunticons can be relied upon to wreak havoc on the roads. And those are the basics on the Stunticons. Let me know your favourite member or your favourite take on the team in the comments. If you've enjoyed this look at Transformers history and lore, subscribe for more. And if you want to get early access to new episodes, support the show on Patreon.